Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 58. 58. Fun fact. There's never been a <laughs> Sharks player number 58. That is amazing. That's crazy. It's weird. Yeah. And with all the influx of rookies, you would think that we'd have one coming up soon. Well, Who I'm knows? sure they just never played for the Sharks with the number 58. There you go. Yeah, probably, probably been in training camp, but yeah. not... Right. Kuda. Right. Kuda. Yeah. Anyway. Cool. So this episode, we're going to be talking about the return of Patrick Marlowe, and we're going to be talking about uh, Kendall Coyne Schofield. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll talk about the special teams. We'll highlight our EASHL and our fantasy leagues, and uh, take a look a week ahead. Very good. Ready to start the show? Ready. Well, I'm going to spread the news. Patrick Marlowe's back, people! You know that you work here. Just uh, here to give you guys an update that we're entering into a phase where we're going to be bringing Patrick Marlowe back to the Sharks, um, subject to uh, getting a contract resolved and uh, some roster situations the next day or so. Um, We look forward to Patrick joining us. We uh, stay very committed to what we've started the year with, which is uh, integrating all the young players in uh, to the organization, but there's realities you have to deal with, such as suspensions or injuries that we've run into a myriad of and even babies being born so uh, well we have a lot of uh, depth it's in a younger player so this is an opportunity to add a, uh, a veteran into our group to give us some veteran depth that's versatile understands uh, how we play and is very accepting of the role that uh, Pete DeBoer our head coach may need it uh, on different nights. So that was uh, a press conference by Doug Wilson there announcing Patrick Marlowe was rejoining the San Jose Sharks uh, really kind of a fortunate thing, I think, for uh, a guy like Logan Couture, who was playing with, you know, a rookie on his side and was having a hard time. You, if you remember, Logan was the one that was saying, you know, the coaching staff teaches these guys and or teaches all of us, and some guys are in the wrong position. We should know where we're at and we should know where we're going, mm-hmm. and some of us just don't. And I think this maybe alludes to that a little bit. Um, I, I can't remember who it was that mentioned this, but basically saying that Marlowe adds that veteran presence to Couture and Marlowe on that line to help solidify them and get their game going. And I think that's exactly what Marlowe brings. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's kind of like a utility knife, and and he could play at so many different positions. Uh, A lot of people think he's only a left winger, but he used to play center. He Mm -hmm. could play the right wing. He's playing the right wing right now. Um, He can kill power or kill power plays. He can kill penalties and (laughs) and score on the power play. So he's really a, a guy that can go up and down the entire lineup and play on any line, really. And yeah. this is actually from Pete DeBoer himself, who was asked about both uh, the system that the Sharks play, if, if Patty would be able to uh, to jump in right away, as well as what I had just said. Mm-hmm. No, same systems, you know, played for Mike Babcock for three years, so he might even have to dumb some things down with us. But uh, <laughs> other than that, I think he's fine. Yeah, I'm not worried about systems. It doesn't matter which side he plays, right or left. Or... Well, that's that's the beauty of him. I think his versatility. You know, he's, he can play right, left. He can fill in at center. He can he can help you on the power play. He can kill penalties. He can play up and down the lineup. Those guys are hard to find this time of year. So yeah, just kind of as Aaron just said, you know, he can play up and down the lineup. And the funny thing about that is we both assumed he was going to be playing on Jumbo's line. Um, and it looks like he's kind of solidified himself again on that Couture line, which, again, mm-hmm. brings that veteran presence, um, kind of that, that comforting, you know that guy knows where to go. He's in the right position all the time. He already knows the system. Um, so he's not learning. Not only is he not just learning the system, but he's also not learning NHL speed, yeah. right? Patrick Marlowe's been there, done that. So, um, again, brings a really good presence to that line. I think he's a, he's a phenomenal fit, and it showed. Yeah. I was a little shocked to see that he was placed on the first line when mm-hmm. I first saw the lineup come out, but it also kind of attests to Pete DeBoer putting Kevin LeBanc in the doghouse a little bit because mm-hmm. I think everyone assumed that LeBanc, and even LeBanc himself, assumed that he would be taking that you know first or second line role uh, as the right winger, but um, he just hasn't been panning out. I mean, we saw last week when he had that one play where he was just coasting on the goal, so... Yeah. Um, I think LeBanc's a little bit in the doghouse, but not quite, um, but kind of not getting rewarded by getting those top line minutes, so putting Patty on there. And what does Patty do in his first game back <laughs> against Chicago? He, he gets two goals. Puts up. Yeah, it's just, it's amazing. <laughs> it's it's like, wow, the first goal was a beaut. It was a little tip in, just like Pavelski. Um, and I can't remember the second goal now, but uh, it was, like, he scored two goals, so it was just, it was crazy. that. Yeah. 
holy cow, this guy that's 40 years old in the light of every 40 year old man out there is going, yeah. <laughs> so if great. I re- if I recall the second goal, he caught the puck uh, right in front of the net, kind of cut across and backhanded it in. If I that's remember. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but a really great showing by uh, by Patrick Marlowe there, um, showing why he's still relevant in this league. Uh, speed is very much a thing, and being able to not only move your feet quickly, mm-hmm. but also to think the game quickly. Again, something that uh, Doug Wilson has brought up about Joe Thornton before. Maybe not having the foot speed anymore, but um, he was never the fastest guy, really. But you know, being able to think the game very fast, and that's the way that he contributes to you know helping these younger players kind of grow and whatnot. Now, now back on Kevin LeBanc real quick. I don't want to pile onto the guy but you know he was on that Couture line which is considered the top line uh, and then got moved back to playing with Jumbo and again I thought that was a bad look for a guy that is supposed to be you know showing the the organization and the rest of the league really uh, that he can be relied upon for a 200 foot game for uh, you know all situations and whatnot but I will say this in the uh, game tonight against Calgary he was moved back into not with uh, with Couture but he was moved with Hurdle and Kane, and he seemed to do pretty well right there. He picked up a goal. It's, it's very funny because you see him shoot off of his right foot. He's right-handed on the right-hand side. Like, everything was right. right. Uh, normally, when you're taking a shot like that, you, you're balanced on your left foot, and you're kind of like turning your body. So, And we've seen him do that in the playoffs. There was a, a one-timer goal that he put in. It was a beautiful goal, and it was kind of reminiscent of that. Not a one-timer tonight, but uh, he did throw it in, and he shot off his right leg. So really interesting to see Kevin LeBanc and his kind of shooting style, how he's able to shoot from one leg or the other, doesn't really matter. So he is supremely talented offensive player, but he does need to work on that 200 foot game. And, um, you know, he's maybe a little bit out of the doghouse. He's not playing uh, the sheltered minutes with Jumbo right now. He is playing with Hurdle and Kane. Mm -hmm. So uh, looking for him to have a much better showing. But as of right now, Patrick Marlowe, kind of top dog right wing right now. Yep, and so. it's great. It's working. Yeah. So the Sharks are 2-0 and with Patty in the lineup, right? Absolutely. And tonight's game against Calgary, he does pick up an assist as well. So Patrick Marlowe in two games, two goals, one assist. Mm. Everything's looking good. Now, it's not so much for me that Patrick Marlowe is the more skilled player that they could throw in there. Uh, some of the young guys are maybe just as skilled. But again, he thinks the game correctly. He knows where to be. He is the veteran that's out there. And it may not be the best player on uh, on that line, but he's the best player for that line, I think. So, um, I, again, everything's just clicking on all cylinders, working out really well. Couldn't be happier with the way things have been going. I know the first four games, everything looked pretty ugly. We're 2-0 and with Patrick Marlowe in the lineup. <laughs> uh, it's too early to call that a trend, so let's not do that. But Again, um, he's not going to be a 70-point right. player, 80-point <laughs> player, but uh, let's write him while he's hot. And he is one of those players that gets those hot streaks and cold streaks. Right. So right now he's hot, so it's great. Um, and we, we talked about this in the live. Um, I think what's going to happen is we're going to see those centers and left wingers kind of paired up. And they're going to stick together most of the year. And then you're going to see the right wingers kind of go up and down the lineup. And I think even Patrick is going to probably go up and down the lineup at some point. Um, and LeBanc come up. You know, it, it'll get worked around. Yeah. So these aren't going to be the lines that we're going to see for the whole season. Um, but to that point, we are going to do a super discount code <laughs> for our wonderful store. Uh, we're going to give, we're going to offer uh, free shipping to anywhere in the United States uh, for any size order. It could be stickers it could be shirt and stickers it could be shirt stickers and a hat it could be all of our shirts <laughs> multiple hats and multiple stickers which of course you're going to get uh and if you use the coupon code patty p-a-t-t-y at checkout which i believe is down here somewhere yeah um if you go ahead and use that code yes you will get free shipping anywhere in the u.s very good. Perfect. Okay. Uh, one other thing we want to talk about, because that is a special deal, but we want to talk a little bit about special teams. So special teams over the course of the last week was not so hot, right? Penalty kill wasn't terrible. Okay. They only gave up one penalty, one power play goal. Uh, the power play, though, was atrocious. They couldn't seem like to get anything, and they gave up three shorthanded goals, yeah. which was just terrible. Uh, this week completely different story right uh, so that first that first week of games right mm-hmm. we were I think it was 0 and 13 so uh, doing the math zero uh, percent on the power play <laughs> uh, and then we went three for eight this yeah. week um, so that's what we say 37 and a half percent yeah. something like that yeah 37 and a half percent I believe is what it was uh, on the whole now for the season uh, we are three for 21 mm-hmm. and a 14.29 whatever yeah. 3. Um, now again not a trend Give it some more time. We're talking about maybe, again, 15, 20 games is what we're talking about in terms of, um, you know, starting to look at those stats to kind of really shape 
what you can expect to see out of the Sharks team uh, moving forward. But, you know, again, if you just take a look at what we've done most recently, trending in the right direction, which is nice. Um, so that's the power play on the penalty kill. How did we do? Penalty kill's been fantastic. Yeah. Right? Like I said, we only gave up one goal last week and one goal this week. So we're at 90% right now, which if you if that stays around where it is, that's going to be top 10 in the league oh, yeah. in, pen, in terms of penalty killing. Um, the Sharks didn't really change any personnel from last year's penalty kill, and the penalty kill was pretty good last year too. Yeah. So I, it doesn't surprise me that they're they're just as good this year, kind of carried forward from the year before. Everyone knows their role and knows what they're doing, and they do it well. So, and in fact, tonight we saw a shorthanded goal. A great chance, what was it, uh, Couture picked the pass yeah. coming across, and then two-on-one with him and Hurdle, and Hurdle buried it. So that's fantastic. <laughs> the Sharks finally score yeah. shorthand and not give up a shorthand goal. <laughs> and what a beautiful pass it was, really. I mean, uh, Logan, again, with the smart stick play, uh, laying it down, picking the puck, uh, skates all the way up and turns himself backwards, kind of opened himself up to the play, uh, and then, you know, slides it right across. Hurdle just buries it. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. So um, really phenomenal. We was actually able to go and watch that game. So it was uh, it was really nice to see in person, everybody jumping up and down cheering and whatnot. <laughs> I get to go to the games every once in a while, but, you know, with the young ones and stuff. Yeah. So most times I'm watching it from home. Uh, but, yeah. When you see a shorthanded goal scored at home, I think it's a little crazier than, like, a power play goal. Like, the yeah. arena is kind of louder. Like, all the fans are a little bit more excited because it's a little bit more dangerous play in a sure, way yeah. like because you're kind of putting yourself out there by having your penalty killers up so far and not killing penalties right in way. you right. know what i mean like yeah, yeah i don't know it's it's rare too it's more rare yeah and and actually on the topic of that the arena being really loud i did want to touch one more thing uh, back to patrick marlowe really fast um you know we have uh some some quick footage of of patty marlowe coming out of the shark head for the first time uh, since he was uh, playing with Toronto, and now he's he's back with the Sharks. So um, he did skate out last uh, this time around, um, just like he normally did, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was great because the the, the fans just kind of go berserk for him, right? So it's, you hear the crowd going nuts, and then you see him come out, and he just yeah, the crowds are going crazy for him, right? And they they announce him, and the crowd goes nuts. They get him on the bench, and the crowd goes nuts. It was just, you know, anything, anytime and everything happened with, yeah. with Patrick Marlowe, the crowd was going berserk. And I happened to catch it, and I think Super Producer Jason may actually have a, a picture here of uh, Patrick Marlowe uh, on the bench. They got some stats up for him and everything, his career stats. And um, you don't see it because there's no video here, but he did kind of wipe away uh, a, a single tear. Single it looked like, tier. yeah. Yeah, exactly. He, he was sitting on the bench, and he just kind of, you know, he, he was like waving at everybody and he sat back down and he just kind of went like this real quick and that was the end of it, you know? So uh, a very emotional return for Patrick Marlowe and we do want to say, you know, hey, Patrick, we absolutely welcome you back. It's so great to see you back in Teal again and we're looking forward to another great season in Teal. So uh, we missed you, bud. Yep. There you go. So what's the next topic of discussion? I think we're talking about Kendall Coyne. Kendall Coyne. She yeah. had her first uh, broadcast opportunity, and it was the Chicago game. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was good. And I, I can't remember. I feel like she grew up in Chicago and she, grew up a Blackhawks fan. So it's kind yes. of a, it was kind of cool that she got to broadcast Sharks' first Blackhawks game. They, um, they actually mentioned that during so the broadcasting. Yeah. Is, is it difficult for you to, to kind of root against the team that you were, grew up rooting for? She goes, yeah, it's... It's kind of weird. It's kind of hard to do. <laughs> yeah, so it was it was very cool. But I thought she did a pretty good job. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I thought she did a great job. Um, I saw some flack online from some people. I didn't like it, but you know, people online just don't like anything new or anything in general. It's the internet. So right, the internet. <laughs> That's just the internet. Um, but people were kind of giving her flack about uh, not having a good repertoire with uh, with. I think I can't remember if it was Jamie mm -hmm. or Brett uh, or both. Um, but that just, it comes with time. Yeah. Like, I remember when Brett Hedekin joined, everyone hated him. <laughs> I remember when Jamie Baker joined, everyone hated him because they didn't have that chemistry because they hadn't been working together very long. So it's going to take time. Yeah. She's going to get better during the season. She'll get more comfortable. Um, it's it's not easy. It's not easy being in front of a camera and, and talking <laughs> into a lens and, and trying to not, you know, fill in some dead space in yeah. time like super producer Jason yells at us all the time <laughs> I mean look not everybody has the uh, the advantage of knowing their broadcast partner since kindergarten right, right. so I, I think there's there's something to be said for a show like this where we already know each other we're already talking to each other as if we're friends because we are this so. is how we normally talk anyway <laughs> like about shark stuff before we had the show 
Yeah, pretty much. No, that's yeah, I, that's not a joke. <laughs> no, that that was the premise of the show. Just, right. We'll just talk, and then if they like it, they like it. If they don't, they right. don't. So I hope you like it because yeah. you're you're watching us right now, so you must like it, I guess. <laughs> um, I mean, having said that, though, with Kendall Coin, uh, I I think one of the things that people need to remember is um, check her credentials. I mean, she knows hockey. Okay, so she's she's been uh, what was a five time gold medalist, five time um, gold medalist in the world championship, and uh, a gold medal in the Olympics in twenty eighteen yeah. recently. Yeah. Granted, you can say, well, that's a little different. That's not quite NHL. Listen, she knows hockey, okay? Yeah. What, regardless of the level that she played at, um, it, it's great hearing her perspective in terms of breaking down the plays. I loved hearing the same thing from Brett Hedekin, from mm -hmm. Jamie Baker, former players in the league. It's great hearing it from... Uh, you know Kendall's perspective now as well, and I have no no problem consuming that. I think it's great, um, and I think it really does go back to one of the hashtags that the Sharks have put out: this teal together, right? And um, you know I can understand if you know you, you're watching and maybe you don't really like it at first. That's fine, but you know kind of you know keep an open mind to it and just keep watching. She's going to get uh, you know even better than I think she already was. I really enjoyed her breakdowns on a lot of the plays. Yeah. So um I think she did phenomenal, so I'm not really sure what you guys are talking about, but um, I think she adds a good dynamic yes. to the broadcasts. Yeah. It's different, a different perspective, different dynamic. I like it a lot. I agree. Yeah. 100%. Good. Welcome Kendall. Welcome, Welcome to the broadcast crew. <laughs> so uh with all that, I mm -hmm. think we'll go into some of the what the fantasy stuff we're let's talking about it. now. Yeah. Okay. So fantasy and EASHL. How's your fantasy right. club? Uh, let's see here. Let's let's go into League One. Um, okay. Maybe I'll mix it up next week and start with League Two. But League <laughs> One here, uh, we'll take a look at the standings. This uh, it'll be finalized tomorrow on Monday. Um, Sunday night's kind of the last night of, of hockey, but I think all the games are done anyway. So mm -hmm. the standings are pretty much updated. Uh, I am in second place, which. Is pretty good after the first week. Um, you can see who's up on top there, but uh, it was it was fun. It was a long week too because the season started on a Wednesday, so it went from Wednesday to the following Sunday. Mm -hmm. So it's just um, it, it feels longer than normal. Usually it goes by quicker. Um, this week will be starting tomorrow on Monday, and it'll go through until Sunday. And then um, uh, here, let's take a look at League Two. Once again, I'm in second place. <laughs> I'm in second place in both leagues. Uh, it's interesting because the first league, I had the first overall pick, which I did not want. Um, and then the second league, I had the 11th overall pick. So is it is it the pick? Is it the GM? You know, second place, it's not bad, right? I'm just going to pat myself on the back just a little bit. <laughs> Whatever. I'm happy. I'm happy I'm in second place in both leagues. <laughs> I can be happy. That's Very right. good. Very nice. Uh, so, and then we'll go ahead and uh, plug some of the EASHL <laughs> stuff. But actually, before we do that, um, this segment here brought to you by Berticelli's La Villa Gourmet Italian Delicatessen. Wow, what a mouthful. <laughs> um, and again, if, if you'd like to have a mouthful of phenomenal Italian food, uh, please do visit them over in Willow Glen. Uh, they have the Chris Combo, which... Oh, so we good. feed the league, right? It's oh so my good. goodness! Yeah, we we order them from my office, and everyone nice. gets so excited when we go. Some when somebody goes there, there's a huge order. It's practically the entire office that orders them, and <laughs> we get a we literally get a box really of Chris combos and bring them back in. So it's if great. one person says I'm going to La Villa, then all of a sudden the orders flying. Yes, in. yeah, everyone goes Man. what? You're going to La Villa? <laughs> uh, give me some wraps and a Chris combo. So we usually have a couple pints of wraps and Chris combos all over the place. It's nice, great. nice. Yeah. Well, hey, maybe you can be that person to uh, kind of share that with the rest of your your co-workers there and get everybody uh, hooked on Chris Combos. Mm. Who knows? In any case, uh, thank you to La Villa for being our sponsor. So, moving on to EASHL, we've got some standings to show you. So, we're going to show you uh, we'll do the Xbox ones first. We want to give them a little extra love because sure. they don't have us on the team. That's what uh, Patrick was complaining about. I'm going to say complaining, but um, whining about. Um, so uh, anyway, here's here's the standings for not the standings, but the the roster and all the uh, the guys that are playing and their stats and um, looks pretty good there. So uh, a few less goose eggs, I hope, than uh, than last time around. Uh, yeah, and looks we'll, like uh, uh, there's a couple games in there. Looks like Patrick's got one point, and uh, Santigas <laughs> has six and. Jay Nakata, 9, has 12. He's got 4 goals and 8 assists. That's pretty good. Oh, I don't yeah. know how many games that is because uh, Patrick kind of cut off the uh, the screenshot yeah. there, but whatever. That's okay. We'll that that just out. means you can't do the math to see uh, points per game. Exactly. Right? So, 
It's all good. And uh, on that note, uh, looking at the PS4 roster, um, yeah, still top dog there, and I shouldn't be because I'm not that good. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, if you do take a look at the uh, points and you look at the amount of games played, yes, Aaron is uh, up there in points per game. But I think we found a little bit of a cheat here, though. A little right? bit. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Because when, of threes, right? When you play as club in threes, uh, you they score count. you score a ton of goals. And well, it yeah, those games yeah. are like ten to eight or something. Yeah, right. Because you're just going back and forth, and it's three on three. So we d I don't think we realized that until about three or four games in. Right. So we pat we didn't pat our stats that much. Yeah. I mean, we're not that bad. <laughs> we're not that good, but we're not that bad either. <laughs> so it's not like I don't know. That's true. But we'll you know what? Uh, we I had three goals the other night. In nice. two games. I had nice. a two goal game and a one goal game. Well, there you go. Yeah. In real you, six on six, not get three you, on three. Get you playing a little more often, right? Huh? Yeah. Did I feed you those those goals or what? One okay. of them maybe. That makes more sense. Yeah. Uh, in any case, yeah, so uh, we had uh, a game the other night. We had five guys on. We could have six, but um, nobody really wanted to do the goalie thing. So. Yeah. Uh, we did, yeah, so five on five. It was a whole lot of fun. Uh, we were actually able to rotate one guy out, rotate a new guy in, so we kind of kept it going for a while. It was a ton of fun. One of the things I'd like you guys to uh, check out, though, is that we have that Discord channel. It's in the Sharks Reddit Discord server, and we'll go ahead and put a link uh, in the description down below so it's easy for you guys to click. You can go ahead and join that and then just find the uh, Fin Factor channel. And inside of there, you know, guys can talk about either the show or if they want to talk about, you know, when they're going to be on for EASHL, it's a good place for people to kind of congregate and uh, figure that stuff out. Right. So uh, I guess that's... If you don't know what Discord is... Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's it on that one, except for the uh, the one clip. Now, we're going to be doing this clip of the week kind of thing, and we don't have many people sending in clips. Uh, we did get one that was, uh, you know, defense first, which I think is, is a good motto, but it's not really something that's people are going to be wowed <laughs> by. So uh, we'll skip on that. But if you do happen to have a really good goal, a really good dangle, or just something that was amazing um, that happened in game, please do kick it our way, yeah. uh, thefinfactor at gmail.com. Let us know. And uh, I have one, actually, a Again, I don't mean to hog all of the highlight reels, but I mean, you know, hey, if you're getting them, you're getting them. That's just how it goes down. I'm gonna have to put a highlight reel so, this, this week. <laughs> so I uh, recently discovered the uh, the hip check, which huh. is uh, which has been awesome and, and tons of fun. Uh, my five foot seven sniper, who's 169 pounds in pro am, I took out Zidane Chara. <laughs> so uh, I understand it's just pro am, but it was it was hilarious <laughs> to see this guy, this pint sized player, uh, flip uh, Zidane Chara. So it was a ton of fun. But that's not the clip I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a clip that Aaron and I were playing. And uh, I actually threw the hip check. And I knocked two guys over. Uh, they both flipped over me. It was really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and show that to you right now. So, uh, yeah, just uh, a pretty fun little clip there. Look like yeah. bowling pins. It you know? <laughs> Your clip doesn't have to be, you know, amazing skill or amazing goal scoring. It could be something just kind of... Because <laughs> ours won't be. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> it could just be something really fun. So, uh, if you do that, send it in, and uh, we you might be featured on the show. So, Perfect. who knows? Wonderful. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the week ahead. We've got two games, light schedule. Yeah, right. just uh, two games. One's on Wednesday and one is on Saturday. Uh, both home games. First is against Carolina. Uh, they're a pretty hot team right now, and they're going to come into San Jose, and I believe they're playing L.A. the night before, so another back-to-back. -back. Hopefully kind of another scheduled win. I feel like a couple years ago, um, or maybe even last season, people were complaining about when people come to the West Coast, mm -hmm. they would usually go San Jose, L.A., Anaheim. So LA and Anaheim would kind of get the back-to-backs yeah. or the second of the back-to-back. So it was kind of like a lighter game. And now it looks like it's going the other way around because Calgary was the same way. They played Vegas and then San Jose the night, uh, the next night. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe they changed it up. Who knows? But I didn't look at the schedule that in depth. But they are playing LA the night before they play San Jose. So that'll be, that bodes well for the Sharks. Uh, they also gives them three days of rest because they last played on Sunday. So... Um, so anyway, Carolina, hot team coming in, um, but on a back-to-back. -back. And then we have uh, Buffalo coming in on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And Buffalo is actually another team that's pretty playing pretty well right now. Yeah, yeah. They're, um, they're finally kind of got two legit scoring lines before it was pretty much one. Um, so it's kind of spread out a little bit more. They're a little bit more of a dangerous team. They are a very young and up-and-coming team. 
that is very up and coming. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Rasmus Dahlin, who was the first overall pick last year, yeah. um, does not look like a sophomore jinx. The, this kid can play, and he's good. He's a good puck-moving defenseman. Uh, so he'll be a player to watch. Jack Eichel, of yeah. course, he was the number two overall behind McDavid. So uh, he gets he's always kind of overshadowed by McDavid. But um, uh, the, they just they have so many good young players. So it's it's a good it's both teams actually Carolina and Buffalo both kind of young teams. So. Very good to watch. Um, I'm sure the Shark Tank won't be as full as normal because it's kind of a weird Wednesday night game. Yeah. Saturday night, not so much, but Wednesday night's kind of weird. Mm-hmm. And it's Carolina on a Wednesday night. Right. So, yes, people who know hockey know that Carolina went far last year. They, they went all the way to the conference finals just like the Sharks did uh, on the East. So, um, But still, like, it'll be a good chance to go to a game, I think. Yeah. Now, so so what are you looking for out of these two games? Now, we, we talked about after 10, because mm-hmm. um, they had lost the first four games. We're talking about with the schedule coming up. I kind of felt that they might go, I think it was 4, 5, and 1. Um, ideally, 6 and 4. Um, how do you think these two games might possibly go for the Sharks here? Um, I think the Sharks should take both of these games. Okay. I think they, they're playing at home, especially the Carolina game, because it's a back-to-back, and they're playing L.A., which is a very heavy, hard-hitting team. Um, they are not a very big team, Carolina, so but they're very young and very fast. Same with Buffalo. They're both kind of young and fast teams. So um, it'll be interesting to see kind of how they match up against the Sharks. The Sharks are a good mix, I think, of now that they got Marlow. Man, I wonder if the <laughs> average age jumped when Patrick Marlow came <laughs> to the team. It probably jumped like a couple years. But the Sharks are trending younger for the most part, uh, especially this year when they started, when they had so many rookies and younger guys in their lineup. So, um, but now it's a little bit. It's a big. It's a big mix of of young and veteran. So, um, I, it'll be fun to watch. I think the Sharks should beat Buffalo. Uh, their goaltending is not the best. Okay. Not that the Sharks is the best, but I, I think the Buffalo is is still doesn't really have the answer in net just yet. But um, I think uh, Carolina kind of the same thing. They have Peter Mrazek and um, I forget who else is there, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how they end up. Yeah, but I think the Sharks should take four points out of a four points. I'd be disappointed okay. if they did not. How really? About that? Yeah, I'd be happy with a split, but if you want four, we'll give them four. I want so. four because I want them to write the ship, and then they're five hundred. Okay, they'll be four, four, four and four. Yeah, right. Fair enough. I like that outlook. So uh, we'll be looking forward to those games, and uh, hopefully, you guys get some tickets, get out there, and go check it out. And uh, we'll have an episode about some of the food and stuff that you'll be able to check out uh, while you're at SAP Center checking out those games as well. Mm-hmm. So be on the lookout for episode number 59, whenever that comes. Coming out this week. Absolutely. Point. Very good. Okay, so anything other than that you wanted to tell we got on? No? Okay, so uh, I would love for you guys to hit that subscribe button, Aaron. Can you point the subscribe button, please? Down. It's down. Really. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, I do see a lot of you guys searching the Fin Factor to find us, which is awesome. I'm, that's really flattering that you guys are searching <laughs> us by name, first of all. Uh, but why bother with that when you can just hit the subscribe button? We'll show up in your inbox. We only do it once a week, maybe twice, every once in a while, but usually just once a week. So we're not going to flood you with a bunch of random stuff. Also, um, we are 15 subscribers away from, from the big 2000. 2000. Mind blowing. Mind Crazy. blowing. Would not have ever thought when we started this that we'd be at 2,000 this early. I would yep. have thought we were about 400, 300 somewhere <laughs> about right now. So uh, you know, it's a big testament to you guys. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad that what we're doing is uh, you know pleasing for you, if you will. And uh, you guys are coming back and checking us out. So hit that sub button if you haven't already. Make sure you hit that bell as well. And please do visit our store, thefinfactor.com. There's three little lines in the upper corner. Smack that. You'll see a support the show link, and it has. Shirts in gray, teal, black. We have a women's deep V-cut in black along with hats and stickers. Everything you do, uh, purchase, goes to helping us out with this, <laughs> the uh, the studio behind us. So we're going to move into Studio B very soon as well. So as a reminder, if you do happen to purchase something, make sure you use that code PATTY, P-A-T-T-Y, and you will get free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Very yeah. good. Man, that was a lot. I'm very sorry <laughs> That's pretty about good. That. Okay, so uh, for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys. I think later this week. Probably later this week. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. 
Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.